how do we stay inspired? It's easy to have flashes of inspired. You know, we come to class, we hear this amazing talk, and we're like, oh, yes, I'm, I'm ready. I'm going to commit for the rest of my life every day. I'm going to act every day for the rest of my life until I die. Uh, we go to hear, you know, like Mary Williamson speak at the Savant, and we're like, yes, I'm going to give over to the Course of Miracles. I'm going to read a Course of Miracles every day. We come take a meditation class, and yes, I'm going to meditate. I'm going to meditate every day. It's going to change my life. And then, and then it will. <laughs> uh, but no, even that's hard to stay committed to. It's hard to stay inspired about that too. And why? Well, because growth is painful. <laughs> Expansion is painful. And stepping into the unknown is scary. But we have to. We have to step into the unknown because there is no other choice. Nature is either creating or destroying all the time. So if we aren't leading with expansion, then by default we are contracting. If we are not actively expanding, then we are contracting, okay? I believe, okay, so what if, what if there is no such thing as good or bad? What if there is no such thing as right or wrong? What if there is actually only creation, maintenance, and destruction? Let's just try it on for a second, okay? What if there is only creation, maintenance, and destruction? If we want nature to have our back, which it does all the time anyway, but if we want more of nature's back, or what <laughs> <laughs> if we want nature to have our back even more, then the best and most elegant way to do that is by leading with creation. So watch. Let's say we lead with creation. Then maintenance is naturally in second place, and destruction is in third. What happens more often than not is that we lead with a little bit of creation, right? We put ourselves out there. We get in a new acting class. We put ourselves on Match.com. We start going to the gym, working out with a trainer, and we like the results. We're like, yes, oh, this is good. I like this relationship. You must be the key to my happiness. Okay, okay, so you just stay exactly the way you are, and I'll stay exactly the way I am, and we'll never change, and we'll just stay exactly the same forever and ever and ever and ever, right? And we start maintaining. We start leading with maintenance. And guess what happens when you lead with maintenance? Destruction moves into second place and creation moves to the back burner. And we all know what it looks like when we leave with destruction. Okay? Now, destruction is not bad, by the way. Destruction has a relevant course in nature. It is a relevant part of the pattern. So rather than judging it as good or bad, when we're in those times of destruction, we have two questions to ask ourselves. One, how was I leading with maintenance? In what areas of my life was I not leading with creation that called forth this destruction? And two, what is this destruction making way for? Because every time destruction moves through, it's making space for creation. It is cleaning house for the new, new. Okay. So here's the answer, my personal take on the answer of how to stay inspired, how to stay committed. We have to, we have to get out of this mindset of it being an end game. That somehow our happiness magically lies on the other side of some person, place, or thing. That somehow, as soon as I book this job, then I will be happy. As soon as I land this agent, then I will be happy. As soon as I get a series regular, seriously, then I'm going to start living. As soon as I have six zeros in my bank account, like, then I don't have to stress anymore, and then it'll all be cool. As soon as I get engaged, as soon as I get like a three carat emerald cut diamond, like, then I'll be happy. Right? As soon as I have kids, then I will feel fulfilled. Then I will start living my life. That day never comes. That day never, ever, ever, ever arrives. So if you are waiting for the perfect house and the perfect lover and the perfect job and the perfect number of zeros in your bank account to start living your life and to be happy, you are effed. <laughs> I wanted to so bad. Um, here's what we can do, though. We can remind ourselves every day, all day, that your happiness exists in one place and that is inside of you. And your happiness exists in one time and that is right now. You keep bringing yourself back to the present moment and, here's the trick, you start creating for the sake of creation. So here's the thing, y'all. It's not about the pursuit of happiness. It is about the happiness of pursuit. You are in that right now, today. You are living the dream right now, today. That's happening now. You're currently living the dream. Okay? <laughs> Enjoy. Enjoy. Because here's the thing. If this is finite. We've got a finite number of days left on this planet. 
I was talking in the morning class today, and I was saying that I used to hide inside my body. I was like the Broadway dancer for 10 years, and I would like wear like, si I was like a size 8, and I would wear like size 14 clothes, and I would just hide inside my body. And if I knew that at 34, men would stop catcalling me on the streets of New York City, you better believe that I would not have spent my 20s hiding. <laughs> my Broadway legs and I would have been willing to be seen because I think at 23 I thought that it was going to go on forever right and that I was always going to be hot and I was always going to be young and there would always be infinite uh, possibility and and that is not true everything changes everything moves on to a different phase and that's okay that is beautiful because it is not an end game your happiness exists right here, and it exists right now. And so when you find yourself, what does Tony call it, the brain drain train or whatever, when you find yourself reviewing the past and rehearsing the future, here's what you got to do. Stop, take a breath, come back to the right now, wake up your senses. See what you're seeing, smell what you're smelling, taste what you're tasting, hear what you're hearing, feel what you're feeling right now. It will jettison you into your right brain. It will help you to access the right now. It will make you more present for your work and it will make you more present for your life. Because the truth is, right now, you're great. Right now, you're safe. Right now, you have a place to sleep, you have food to eat, you have people who love you, and you are currently living the dream. Bleeding sun stars.